A subscriber to my weekly dog ear newsletter wrote in this. She said, if I could ask you anything, it'd be how to mix copywriting and SEO in a way that makes your audience want to keep reading while pleasing the Google gods. Oh, those SEO gods. Well, one of the most common questions that I get is how do I mix SEO writing with juicy, helpful content that's voicey, fun, and even playful to read? Sometimes that SEO strategy can feel a little bit robotic when you're using these keywords that are said the way you probably wouldn't normally say things. This is a great question. I'm gonna jump into it in today's video. Now, while it's unrealistic to actually land in that number one spot for every single keyword that you're going for, you can realistically land on pages one, two, or three. So if you've ever struggled before with writing content and blogs that bubbles up and does land on pages one, two, or three of Google, or heck, you don't even know what keywords to use, well, you are in the right place. Because by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to figure out keywords for your blog and your website and you're going to be able to write great SEO driven content with a better blogging strategy. Also stay tuned till the end. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and give you a little challenge that you can implement today that will help you get on track to a better SEO strategy. Hey there, if we have not met yet, my name is Ashlyn Carter and I have helped thousands of creators and creative entrepreneurs like you make more money with their words, both as a conversion copywriter and a launch strategist because not knowing what to say, even in your SEO content and SEO copywriting should not be the the thing that's holding you back from making sales. The last thing I want is for you to get frustrated going for some keyword that you're never going to realistically rate for. So let's go through these three tips plus one bonus one to find those keywords and write a better blog. Click like if this is exactly what you need today. Also click subscribe if you want to get the next video in this series. The next video is going to be specifically writing that SEO copy on your website itself. So those landing pages that are living and breathing 24 seven, today's video is gonna focus more on the blog content in itself. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you have this blog topic in mind that you're going to write about, or if you're gonna create an auxiliary blog piece of content for a YouTube episode or a podcast that you have, number one, we're gonna make this list and then flesh it out with related keywords. Okay, so in last week's video, I'll link it down below, I got you started at this minute mark here with creating a word salad of sorts of different types of keywords that you should be going for. So in this first step, we are going to flesh that out just a little bit more. Essentially, what other facets of those subjects should we be considering or phrasing with more of a long tail keyword, which is a just fancy way to say a keyword that's more than one actual word. Now again, this process will work for figuring out your keywords that you want your overall website to rank for, which is what I'll talk about in next week's video, but right now we're gonna apply it to a blog post or a piece of pillar content specifically. First, I think it'd be helpful if I show you a quick screenshot of what my blog content outline looks like. Now, again, I talk a lot about pillar pieces of content, hero content. So when I say blog, this is in addition to a YouTube video that I'm turning out every single week. But what you can see here is a basic outline and this is where I start every single week. So I duplicate this inside the correct folder, inside our Google file structure. And this keyword section right here is the one that I'm talking about trying to fill in. So to fill that in, I primarily love three tools the most of all. There are keywords everywhere, Uber Suggest and SEM Rush. Google's keyword plan isn't too shabby either, but those other three tend to be my favorites. So I know there are so many keyword tools out there, so just find what you love and use it. I've tried tons of different ones over the years, and these are the ones that I just keep favorited because they were easiest. All right, we're gonna start with my favorite keywords everywhere. So this is functioning as a Chrome plugin. Um, I'm here on the website. I had clicked install for Chrome. It's already up here, as you can see with this icon. So um, let's come over to a Google tab, and what you're gonna be able to see, I just ran a search for a brand photographer and so there's a couple of ways that we can come up with some other keyword ideas that we could use. I'm pretending for the sake of this example that I am a brand photographer and maybe I'm launching a course on brand photography and how to be a brand photographer. So I'm just going to see some ideas. One place we can start before we even worry about keywords everywhere, Uber suggests, is just seeing what Google recommends. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you probably already knew this, you can see all these related searches, other things that people are searching for. So that's interesting. But what I really like is being able to see a little bit more data and information thanks to keywords everywhere. And Uber suggests, which also here it is, this U that also functions as a Chrome plugin. So they're free, just install them. And even with the basics, not not even worrying about the paid plans, you can get a lot of aggregate information. So I'm gonna talk about these numbers. This is a keywords everywhere thing right up here. 
in just a moment. But right now, let's look at the words specifically. So Keywords Everywhere is going to give me this list of other words that I could use. Also down here, and I'm going to talk about numbers because this is a lot, right? This is a lot, and this can help narrow, be narrowed down based off of the actual number of people that are searching every month. But I just wanted you to see how many different words you can come up with in different phrases, and you can play around. That's not very specific. So let's see, uh, personal brand photography. Let me try that. Let's see. So as you change this, these metrics over here on the side are going to change as well. Here's some great keyword phrases. These are going to be some good ideas that you can use in blog posts and beyond. So that is the first way that I wanted to show you to find some uh, keywords by using keywords everywhere and Uber suggest plugins. All right, tool number three that I like to play around in is called SEMrush. And I have done more of an in-depth deep dive. I'll link the YouTube that I did to that where you can kind of see in these tabs. And I have the paid version of this. I would recommend if you do a lot of content creation, I think the paid version is worth it. Again, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you my, like the ninja reason I think it is worth it. But what I want to do specifically is come over here to where it says keyword overview. And I went ahead and typed in kind of the same keyword that we were looking for. So you can see that this is going to pull the same sorts of information as well. So again, like I said, there's so many tools that kind of do the same things and offer different variations. I know this one can look a little bit overwhelming. So just pick the one, try one try maybe two together. And then if you're really getting into it, um, add a third that you can do your keyword research to. So I spend about probably 15 minutes prior to writing a blog, looking for different ways that I can find all of these keywords and pulling them together. And now let's go ahead and talk about the numbers, which is up next. Okay, so now your small word salad of initial keyword ideas you have turned into a gigantic word salad, which is fun. And hey, you're just trying to write a blog that serves your people and helps rank. Well, friend, that's why we're going to narrow that list down and see how we can trim it based on volume and size of searches. So step two, we're going to select the words with a volume that you can actually rank for. Okay, you've probably heard someone say before, that is a really competitive keyword, but what do they actually mean? Well, this, it's a short way of saying how many people are searching for this every single month. Think of it like market share. There could be so many thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people searching for that one thing, or it could be a smaller group, and that still matters. That's still probably worth going for that market share. That's still X amount of people you could gobble up and lead into your content. So let's go back to the computer because within those three tools, I want to show you how to be aware of search volume or just pay attention to it as you go through and organize the keywords based on the volume so you can kind of tell where you want to uh, shoot your arrow and have a target range. Okay, let's see how we can narrow down that ginormous list of words that you made because that's just, it's stressful when it's that big to me and I want to actually know what to go after. So here's my magic number that I'm going to give you. I like to aim for a number of monthly searches right here with this keywords everywhere. I like this number to be over 200 and under 5,000. And that is me personally, what I, what I like to go for. I just want to tell you how I do it. That tells me if there's under 5,000 searches a month, I think I can play in that sandbox. I think I can go for that. If it is over 100, over 200, I that signals to me that enough people are looking for it, that I want to spend my time creating content about it. So if we look over here, that's what these numbers mean. This first one, this volume, that search volume. So all of these like like this estimate is about 30 people, 20 people-ish a month are searching for these specific phrases. I mean, it's just to me that's not worth creating a bunch of content for. But if I can see that number tick up and then um, you can also, when you have keywords everywhere, you'll be able to see, you can click and it'll drop down those same numbers for this. This line right here, this is Uber Suggests. That's going to give you some more information about uh, the domain authority of that website. Look, and it tells you a little bit too, which is really helpful. Let's do um, brand photography course and see what happens. Just to play around a little bit and see what other things come up. Oh, wow. See, that's like super low. Um, so if you are maybe wanting to teach this brand photography course, like look, there's not a lot of people searching for it, which is a good thing, but also to crack from an SEO standpoint, I would 
you're going to have to like put different bait in the water than trying to build a blog post around this. You know what I mean? So because there's not there's not that many people searching for it. So how can you zoom backwards? Let's look over at SEM Rush one more time so we can see those numbers are in here as well. Here it is volume. So you can see those. And like I said, I'm going to um, play around with trying to hit again like this is probably this is one is great. Um, I like to hit that over 200 yet under 5000. This one would be a great one as well to go after. And so I hope that shows you a little bit like some of these I wouldn't even worry about writing down. Actually, most of them I would not worry about writing down because what I'm going to be concerned with are these big kahunas. I would probably looking at this, I would go, I would add brand photography and personal branding photography to my list, not worry about the rest of these. And I would do some other research up here, like different ways to phrase it, keyword variations, and see if I can find more words that are in these kind of numbers. Now you can do your thing here. I know some people are real spreadsheety. I actually am, but I don't have a big spreadsheet of all of this pulled together. I know what I want to rank for with my website. So when I'm working on a specific blog, I just am kind of doing this volume ranking while I'm trying to find the right keywords. And I know the range that I'm trying to stay between. So those are the words that I'm going to pull over and put in this blog and content outline. A good rule of thumb is to really pay attention to those long tail keywords, those phrases, and maybe try to go after those because again, they may not have the biggest search volume in the world, but that's a good thing. You don't want to play the game with some of those some of those websites and brands. And if there's enough people phrasing it a certain way, see if you can, again, like I said, gobble up that part of the market. Let me give you an example using a student of mine. Her name is Leah and she's a calligrapher. If hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people are searching for the phrase wedding calligrapher, but considerably fewer are searching for that phrase within her area, well then what do you think we want to try to rank for with her website? Okay, so we've done this keyword research. The research portion is done. You can go back here in step three. Now we're just gonna actually write. So two things here. Here. If you watched last week's video where I was talking about the Google algorithm updates that are coming down the pipeline, then what's so exciting is that content is still king. And if you write content that is just chef's kiss, so good, it's gonna have a great chance of doing well. So really try to serve your people and offer up good quality content. I always say I want my blogs, my emails, everything to be worth the time at least that it took to click over and get into the content and read up on it. Now I've covered my blog post uh, workflow and formula right here. I will also link it below. But to do a quick recap, here we go. I'm gonna turn that camera around. Essentially when I'm moving into the writing portion of the phase, I am not thinking at all about SEO keywords. I'm writing in my voice, my style, how I like to teach, how I like to talk to people. I am not worrying one iota about anything having to do with a keyword. And pause, here is that challenge for you. I want you to screenshot this formula that I have. This is the research portion that I do before I make a YouTube video, before I write a blog, anytime, even sometimes some lives. Before I go into creating the content, I want to make sure that I have like a chef with their mise en place. I've got everything in front of me and all these different little tools that I could use to enhance this content. Content. And again, like I said, make it worth that click. I showed this to some copywriting for creative students on a call last week and they thought it was so helpful. So I'm going to show it to you as well. No matter what type of content you create, I think that this research outline will be helpful. And truly, once I have that, moving into the blog writing portion kind of writes itself. And again, like I said, it is my voice, my style, my personality coming out as I write. Which brings me to step number four. Now I'm gonna go back in and soup it up for SEO. My A number one ride or die go-to tool here is Yoast. I typically pick one primary keyword, one secondary keyword out of that list that I'm really trying to rank for to use in the title, in the meta description, and so on and so forth. But the rest of those words, I am gonna try to weave into the content. So I'm gonna go back up into the content of the blog that I've drafted and see where I can plug in different words. One thing I may try to start doing in 2021 is having at least around seven-ish additional keywords in this blog. Neil Patel one time said, the number of keywords, there's not a magic keyword, just as many are actually relevant to the post. And those are the three big steps. I told you though at the top that I was gonna give you a bonus tip and here it is. The last piece of the puzzle would be to track it. And for that, I love SEM Rush. It is a paid tool, but to me, it's worth it. Again, I've been blogging multiple times a week since 2016 at this point. I don't wanna have a big spread or trying to be keeping up with where different keywords are falling or where my 
content is ranking. So I just lean on this tool to do it for me and send me a weekly email with where I'm ranking for what. If you love this concept of writing quality content and copy that is ready for SEO, but it is not overly gimmicky or schmoozy or robotic and instead infused with voice and personality, then I would invite you to check out my brand voice guide. This is a freebie 10 page printable guide that you can download today. It's full of prompts to help you zero in on your brand's voice, tone, terminology, and tempo so you can begin to have a working doc in your business that's a North Star or a mood board for the words that you're gonna use to market your business. I will link it below, so grab it while you still can. Now you know how to write a better SEO blog, but what about how to prep your entire SEO strategy? Well, I've got last week's video, again, part one of this three-part series teed up for you. If you liked this video, help me out by clicking that like button, hit subscribe if you don't wanna miss part three, and then comment below with any questions that you may have or just the word helpful if this actually served you and helped you out today. As always, thanks so much for watching. Here's to working from a place of more rest, less hustle, and I'll see you in the next video.